is like every day we're seeing who we are as people. When I was growing up, I, I lied for people to accept me because I didn't accept myself. Mm. So I would make up stories so, so then you would accept me into your world. I would, uh, everything I did was for someone else to like me. It wasn't until I started reading my own book about how pathetic I was as a human being. I could blame my dad, I can blame kids at school, I could blame having health issues, ADD, my mom not being around. Great mom, but she was doing her thing. Right. I could blame a lot of people. And that's the book I was reading. And I put it off on everybody else. It wasn't until I said, you know what? For me to fix this, I gotta read what the hell, what the fuck is wrong with David Goggins? Not, not blame anybody. Read my book and say, okay, I'm afraid of my shadow. How can I overcome that? Go in the military, get your ass kicked, do things you hate to do. Be uncomfortable every fucking day of your life. Roger that. I'm not the smartest kid in the world. Okay. Instead of somebody saying, oh no, you're smart. No, no, don't say that to yourself. I said to myself, no, I'm a dumb motherfucker. Okay, roger that. How you get smarter? Educate yourself. So the things that we run from, we run from the truth. We're running from the truth, man. So the only way I became successful was going towards the truth. As painful and as brutal as it is, it changed me. It, it allowed me to become, in my own right, who I am today. Why platoon? I love to see people who were getting beat down and this there's there's scenes there's scenes that this drove me and people in my hell weeks you know i was in three of them they'd always hear me singing these songs these songs humming these songs in torturous situations when you're when everybody's quitting this fucking cold i would be somewhere gone somewhere fucking gone and somewhere fucking dark as shit there's a scene in the platoon when elias when barnes shoots elias and you know, they think Elias is dead and the choppers are tanking off and Charlie Sheen's asking, you know, Tom Berenger, where's Elias? Where's Elias, William Defoe? Oh, I found him back there dead somewhere. And through the woods, the Viet Cong is chasing Elias through the woods and they're shooting him in his fucking back. And all he wants to do is get to the fucking chopper. He's getting shot in his back, he's getting up, he's getting shot in the back, he's getting up. And you see this guy just fighting. I love the fucking guy who just fucking fights. And so I put these things in as reminders that you're gonna have to fucking suffer, man. This fucking point two five, man, this is, man, you're gonna have to fucking suffer to, 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 to go from this fat, insecure motherfucker to one of the best guys on the planet Earth. This journey is gonna take something that is gonna be incomprehensible to most people. And these different visualizations how I visualize them in my self-talk, it became so nasty and dirty that I almost liked the fact that I went 0.25. So it became from being defeated to like, man, all right, motherfucker, maybe, you know, maybe the Marvin go 0.75. You know, it just became this different mindset. I turned negatives into positives. So I would I would take it like who who would even think about doing this? So I would sit in my couch saying, who at 297 who can't fucking swim that great, who's scared of the fucking water, would have the fucking balls? Play the balls to fucking man up, quit a job, and go and just put everything on himself. So it's how I started talking to myself. And that's been the story of my life. I uh, I see something that's that's quite off, quite not the same, and that's what I go for. I've this this, this book is exactly who I am as a person. Exactly the way I did this book is how I've done my almost my entire life. Mm -hmm. Is I see what is not the norm what's impossible with you know what, what all the theorists say you shouldn't be doing this that's the wrong way to go and i'm like hmm let me see if i can pull Let's this shit off here. yeah let me yeah, go over yeah. here man let me see if i can pull this shit off was that part of the the challenge the decision i mean i, I it, it seems to me that the decision to self-publish was generated more by a desire to really you know own your story that was that's it 100 percent it's, it, it, there was no driven message with me trying to prove people wrong or whatever. It was 100% by me wanting to own my life. There's a lot of people I know that, that, that I speak with right now that have nice book deals out there and the people who buy their book, whatever publishing house, they can't even talk some of this stuff, you know, in, in like, like in speaking engagements. And I'm like, what, you can't even talk your story? And some of these, they're like, no, like, I got to make sure that they're, they're aware of it. And I'm like, no, man, mm -hmm. I want to own 100% of the suffering I went through in my life. I don't want anybody telling me, hey, Goggins, you can't say this. 
I would lose my shit. What you? What, I suffered this this badly, and you, you you gonna fucking tell me I can't say this? <laughs> there, there have been all kind of problems with that one. Uh -huh. So I made sure that I, I wanted to own all of Can't Hurt Me, and own all of my own life story. So that's what it really is all about. Well, you really have ownership not only of your own story, but your ability to tell it. Right. And you know, as as somebody who's like a member of the ultra community, you know, I remember, and I think we talked about this last time. Um, you kind of disappeared for a couple. Couple years there from right. around like I don't know what it was like 2009 2000